Welcome to Maze Lico Challenge. Today's problem is construct target array with multiple sums. Given an array of integers target from a starting array A consisting of all ones, you may perform the following procedure. Let x be the sum of all elements currently in your array. Now you can choose an index such that the index is in between 0 and the target size and set that value in A from i to x. Now you may repeat this procedure as many times as needed. Return true if it is possible to construct the target array from the A array, which is going to be all ones. Otherwise, return false. Okay, so here in example, we have target 935. This is going to be true because we can start with 111, get the sum of 3, make that middle one 3, now it's going to be a sum of 5, make that last one 5, and now this is sum of 9, make that first index number 9. So 935 is possible. Here, 1112 though is not possible because we can't construct two from the starting way one. So let's begin by looking at this example here. Um, the very first insight we should realize is that rather than beginning with the first array uh, that we can start with here to see that if we can hit 935, it makes much more sense to move backwards. Start from the target and go to the start. And the reason for that is uh, there's only one path that we can go from this here. We already know that the sum of this is going to be 17, right? Um, that means, basically, uh, the maximum value from this array is going to be the sum of the previous state. So this would be sum 9 right here. And basically, it would be some amount of integers that's going to equal 9. Now, what we can do is take the maximum from this array, which is going to be 9, and we'll just subtract um, the rest of the sums inside of this array. So here, this is going to be 8, and you can say, okay, well, this is going to be 3, 5. Just subtract 8 from 9, and that's going to be 1. And we know that this is the only one that can do that, so we can replace that with a 1. And then we can move forward again to see, okay, what's the max here? Okay, max is going to be, what, 5. And uh, that would mean uh, this will be 5. Max is going to be 5, so what we can do is subtract uh, the rest of the array, which is going to be 4, from 5, and it's going to be a 1. And finally, this would be take the 3, uh, subtract 2, and that's going to be 1 with here, so that would be with 1. So now, we can do that, and we can realize that that's the only path we can go. And the reason for that is we already know what the sum of the previous state is, so that's going to be the max value in this array, and then we can just calculate what the previous value of this index is by subtracting that from the rest of the arrays so okay so that's the basic intuition um, now the second thing is we should realize that index points don't matter here what we can do is create some sort of data structure that's gonna always keep the maximum integer on top like a heap so we'll have a max heap um, to pop off and then calculate the candidate for the next and then input that right back into the heap and the next loop we'll check to see what the maximum is from there, okay? So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Let's first start by creating our heap, and this is gonna be a max heap. So I'm gonna say for n in target, the negative ends. And the reason I make them negative ends is because that way it's gonna be a max heap. So let's first heapify this. Oops, heapify. Uh, before we do that, actually, let's also calculate the total by just getting the sum of the targets. Okay, so now we have our heap. What do we want to do? Uh, well, we're going to pop off the max one, right? And we first need to throw a while loop. What do we want up here? We're not quite sure yet. So let's get our candidate, which is going to be the, um, say, heap pop from our, from our heap. And also, let's make that a negative because it's just going to make it easier to do all our calculations here by making that positive again. All right, so the first thing I suppose we can do is calculate the rest of the sum. And what's that going to equal? Uh, well, we already know what, we'll call it rest of, we already know what the total is, right? That's just going to be total minus this candidate here, right? And that's going to be the rest of. Uh, now, what do we want to do? Uh, one, now, okay, let's start thinking about what we want to put in this while loop. Uh, the first thing, I suppose, is 
we'll say while the, the max the very max value on this heap if it's not equal to negative one we'll continue this loop and the reason i can do that is if we find that the maximum value on our heap is a one or negative one um, that means that all the values at this point should be one okay and as long as we have some sort of if condition here to break out of our loop uh, this would work so what is going to be our if condition well the first thing we should realize is the rest of these values right here um, it should be less than the max value max value that we just popped off and the reason for that is we added whatever the rest of value here is from the previous value here so naturally this whatever this value is should be less than the number here whatever that um, uh, candidate is so if candidate uh, is less than or equal to the rest of we can immediately return a false all right okay now let's calculate the previous value that it should be and how do we do that uh, well we do have the um, we do have candidate right and the candidate minus the rest of would be the previous value now we need to update our total uh, and I suppose you could just get the sum of the heap but just to make this a little bit more efficient what we'll do is instead get our total and we'll subtract let's first subtract the candidate and then we'll add back whatever this previous value is now finally if we finish this loop here then we can return a true. Now, one more thing, um, we should also realize that it's possible that this rest of value is, like we calculate this total minus candidate and this rest of value is like less than zero, less or equal to zero. Like, that can totally happen. And if that happens, then this is not possible. Like obviously we can't have the rest of the value arrays being something like, zero or negative it should at least be one so if this rest of value is less or equal to zero or the candidate is less or equal to rest of then we can return false okay so just to see if we're doing this right i'm going to print out the heap here and see if this is working the way i hope i hope it should uh oh right we gotta I forgot we gotta push back this this heap into the heap so the heap push into the heap the previous value and we gotta make that a negative okay um, so this didn't quite do what I hoped it did let's see push okay well maybe it's because I printing it too early let's try this Okay, there we go. So we can see negative nine, three, five, uh, and then we push the negative one here. Now it's gonna be negative five, and then we push negative three. So it's working the way I hoped. Um, now, one thing is this would work for most cases, but there's an edge case that actually reaches a time limit exception. So say that we had like, for instance, one to 100, something like this. If I did this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna do it like a lot of times, like. And you can imagine if I had like one to a million, this would take a million iterations. Um, but we can actually avoid this. One thing we can realize is as long as this value is gonna be the maximum, we could just do a modular uh, because we, all, we know the rest of is gonna remain the same if this uh, is greater than the rest of. So remember how we subtracted rest of here? Instead of that, we'll do a modular. And what that's gonna allow us to do is basically get uh, this candidate down, all the way down to when it's gonna be less than the rest of. Um, and that way we know it's not gonna be uh, multiple hits. That way we can only do it like one time here, okay? All right, so let's submit that. Oh, I shouldn't have printed this. Hopefully that still works. Okay, there you go. So accepted. Time complexity. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I honestly have no idea. I, I think it's 
well, at the very least, it's n log n because of this this heapify. But I I'm sorry, I have no idea. It's n log n times something here, possibly more log n. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually not sure. But it's really late to get Nate, guys. Uh, it's a really hard question. Uh, hopefully, this helps understand the intuition. But I, th I think the rest I'm going to just leave up to you guys to get. So, all right. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing. <laughs>